Today's video, I was lured north to Iowa by this Coral 1959 Ford Galaxy 500 with beautiful tricolor interior, with the kicker being that it's been taking a 44-year nap. The owner did not want us to be filming on his property too much, which is understandable. So we put some extra wheels I had as rollers to get it out of there off of its flat bias wise. Now I knew they've had the car running off a bottle of gas, but that's about it. I do not believe that this car has been touched in a very, very long time. But it's been stored indoors all these years. It's definitely a survivor. We just got back to town with the Coral, not pink, 59 Fairlane. Not just Fairlane, the Fairlane 500 with that. Now this car has been off the road since 1979. Passed inspection in Iowa in 79. The guy that I got it from has had it since 2000. It hasn't driven since. And it's just been in storage, waiting for someone to put it back on the road, and that's what we're gonna do this time. It's not even barn dust, it's actually like nice building dust. Because <laughs> <laughs> I spoiled it a little bit, but we've got a 352 four barrel under here. Well, we pulled her into a nice shady spot here. I'm so confident that this thing's gonna run. They said it ran anyway. I mean, it looks pretty clean. Old 352. These things are basically indestructible. They are kind of a pain to work on, but you know, you hardly ever have to. Let's check the oil. Alright. Where's the dips? Here. There you go. You check. Just like your car, you're the expert here. Um Is full? It full? Yeah. Oh yeah. It looks clean. It doesn't look that bad, actually. Uh, what do we got for fuel? Oh. Yeah, they've had it running off of a can or something. Simplifies things. Yes. We put a boat tank here. Drive car with no brakes into shop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, easy. Piece of cake, really. Yeah. Maybe we should see if it cranks first. Yeah, let's see if it at least bumps over or something. What do we got for coolant, though? You never know. Totally full of green antifreeze. I gave $2,400 for this car. Okay, they wanted $3,150. I said I'll give you $2,400 bucks, and I went and got it. It is that easy. Deals are out there. Just gotta find them. A resident Ford expert is on the case. Yeah, a positive post doesn't work very good when you put it against metal for some reason. Yeah, I've learned that the hard way. Uh, beautiful. The resident Ford expert is installing the battery now. You want to do the honors, or? I'll do the honors. Okay. I'll blow up the engine. Wait, what? It's not even hooked up. <laughs> <laughs> it must have had some fuel in the bowl still. Huh. Will it run and drive? Yeah, it will. These aren't. It's not rocket surgery. All right, <laughs> just, just buy better cars. Well, that was too easy, really. So uh, we could go ahead and make our lives harder if we want. Could at least throw the boat tank in the trunk and hook it to the factory fuel line, or get my inspection camera and look inside the tank and see how bad it looks. These old Fords always have a drain plug on the tank, actually. We could actually drain it. If it doesn't look too bad, just drain the bad gas and see if we could just fill it up, you know? Examine her a little bit. There's the drain right there. Nine inch rear end, just like all 59 Fords. Who knows what kind of gears or anything. God, this thing's rock solid underneath. There's our fuel filler. What the hell is that? Oh. Well, that's, um... That's gas. It's gas. <laughs> yeah, that's varnish. Well, we're off to a great start <laughs> on this. Go check out the camera and tell me where, how I'm doing. Okay. See anything? Uh, no. Go in further if you can. I think you're under water. Not underwater, but yeah. submerged. So the inspection camera didn't really work, uh, but this did. <laughs> that kind of. That pretty much tells us everything we need to know. Let's not hook that up. Boat tank. I just walked by and the dome light works. But yeah, I know we were gonna go do something else. ADHD is taking hold. Idiot lights. We got some Buddy Holly. It turned on. Gotta yeah, let the tubes warm up on it. What is this stuff? Oh. Oh. <laughs> tubes warmed up. Be my shooting guard. <laughs> <laughs>
off against some really good. You know what these little arrows on the radio are, JD? See these little arrows on the dial? Yes. That's where you'd tune into in the event of a nuclear catastrophe. <laughs> That's style right there. Modern automotive designers. What are you doing? Your grandpa was way cooler. <laughs> Look at that. I could stack up a lot of dead bodies in here. Dude, for, oh, that's brand new. Got a brand new welcome mat for the trailer. Oh, there's that ruined wheel well molding. There's this, which I that's... actually think we have some, but still, good to have this. Trim is also pretty screwed up. I guess it's probably part of that too. So here's a problem though. We want to run the boat tank, right? I don't know if we're going to find uh, too many rust holes in this one. I do have an idea. What's that? So under here. There's a plug here. In the, oh, the tire well. Yes. So we could just run our hoses through that. We should figure out where the fuel line is. I don't know. You're the Ford expert. Well, I... <laughs> where is it, Ford expert? I don't know. Figure it out. Figure it out what this is for. Here's the fuel line. Odds that it comes off. Bad. Wait. Oh. As just like I was saying, it's going to come right out of there. No problem. This car wants to live very badly. I think we got a good one. Now what's going to come out of this? Why didn't we pull this by the garage? Oh yeah, it's in the sun though. That's hot. You know what we probably need? Some sort of container. Oh. You know what we don't need? Some sort of container. Clearly there's nothing going to, I mean nothing's going to come out of there. I mean, like I was just saying. Not Dude, that is, pour. oh. It's bad. This thing's trashed. <laughs> uh, we need to go get some brake clean from the shop and get some way to blow this line out. If it tells you anything, I just unhooked a hole on the bottom of the tank and nothing's coming out. And there's gas in it. I think I've found our access hole. It took some doing, but I was actually able to find a rust hole in this car, so. You know what, it's pretty much scrap. Just went and grabbed a fuel filter, some brake clean, see if we can get that line flushed out, put a filter ahead of the fuel pump, and uh, just throw the boat tank in the trunk. What, what's this? Oh no. You just had to come show off, huh? Huh? You just had to come show off, huh? Yeah. I think this thing is just full of, like, <laughs> bees or something. Get a rubber hose on it, and then we'll spray some brake clean in there, blow it out the front. I don't know how much good this is going to do. Ah! Got your eyes? <laughs> Well, let's do it again. Okay. Oh. Oh my God. Yeah. Toy sauce. So we put this on here, right? Like that. Uh huh. Pretty good, right? Yep. Oh yeah. This hook? is a really good. Point. We gotta hook it up to the air compressor. Ready? Yep. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's working. Crap coming out? Yeah, a little bit. I am putting this clear fuel filter ahead of the fuel pump here, even though we are isolating the fuel tank out of the equation, and even though we very thoroughly cleaned out that fuel line, we are just going to make sure that maybe nothing gets to the fuel pump. And I want to see what it looks like. Got to install the JAG tank, gas tank, for all things. Wow! <laughs> yes. Perfect. Yes. However, our fuel line's over here, and our access hole is over here. The fuel hooked up? Very safe. There's our pro fuel system hooked up. Obviously, temporary at best. I guess we're ready to rock. I think it probably still has some fuel in the bowl, so hopefully that's enough to start pulling some gas. <laughs> leaking gas out of the uh, fuel pump diaphragm. You know what's uh, crappy about that? What? Uh, we can't put just any old fuel pump on this because that runs the windshield wipers. This is a, this car has vacuum windshield wipers. 
it uses this upper diaphragm, the vacuum hoses, up to there. And it uses a vacuum motor to run the windshield wipers. It was really common in the 50s. I can't believe that works. I can't believe they work either. They almost never do. Because of that, we're going to have to rebuild this fuel pump instead of buying a new one. Right, I don't want to burn up the power steering pump, so let's check the level on the reservoir. Yuck. What the heck? Uh, let's see. Fluid level, quarter inch from the top of the reservoir. So, yeah, it's pretty low. Probably leaks like a faucet. All these slave cylinder styles almost always do. You gotta check transmission fluid too. Oh yeah. Great. Totally full. Totally full? Really? Yeah. Try to back it off? Yeah. Before it catches on fire. How bad is it leaking? Oh wow. Uh, oh. Okay, actually. Yeah, shut it off. <laughs> Like you're really bad. Do I dare call O'Reilly and ask for a fuel pump rebuild kit? They're not gonna have any idea what I'm talking about. I don't know if it's a fuel pump or not, but this fuel line uh, to the carb is completely loose. So let's start there and then see what that does. Better? No. Huh? No. No better? No better. New plan. We're going to bypass the uh, mechanical fuel pump entirely, throw a clicky clack in the trunk. I think if we just leave the mechanical pump on there, it should make vacuum and the wipers should work. So maybe we just run a good quality electric pump on this. I'm having a really hard time finding a rebuild kit for that. Uh, if you know what I need here, it looks like a Carter style pump to me. I have one or something, I'll gladly pay for it. Let me know. Look, our fuel line has a hole in it. What a good place to install clicky clack and upgraded drill battery holder courtesy of roadkillcustoms.com you just slide that on there and boom you're in business you just quick change your drill batteries that way to keep on going on your road trip you know but we'll just cut it right in that split fill the trunk with gasoline and then put sparks in it may not be a smart man but i can hook up a clicky clack to a drill battery isn't that cool yeah that is cool <laughs> Oh my god, stop! Well, yeah, I mean, it's gonna spray what was in the bowl out. Oh, it will? Well, in the, the sediment oh, bowl. Yeah. There was more in there than I, uh, you know, anticipated. <laughs> uh, you think it's done pumping out? I don't know. Working? Yep, it's working. I think gas is gone. Good. Oh my god. <laughs> Safety third. Power steering is working. Nice. It's an exhaust manifold. Yeah. Temperature gauge works. She it just does? got up to temp. Nice. Oh. Oh. oh, it says power steering in the steering wheel. Oh, it does? Yeah, put up our fresh air vents. Here we go. All right, nothing like a drive with no brakes. Let me make sure I'm one click off a of neutral. Nice and easy. Come on, baby. Let's. Yeah, I know you haven't moved in a while. It's all right. So that's a good girl. Yeah, that's a good girl. Oh, there's something horribly wrong with the suspension of this car. <laughs> it's got some get up, doesn't it? It shifted in a second. I'm going way too fast. Um. Uh, uh, uh. Where do we go? There we go. See, I know what I'm See, doing. Yeah. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Listen to that thing. It's just like, come on, it's time. Been off the road too long. We gotta go. Come on. Come on, we're going from Chicago to San Bernardino. Getting our kicks on Route 66 and this thing. Maybe with brakes, though. Yeah, brakes <laughs> would be better. <laughs> 
Your oh, car's all metal up there. Yeah, it's all metal. Maybe. maybe it's maybe it's supposed to be there. I don't know. Oh, that's supposed to be high. Oh, he ah. did it. Does it? Hey. It does. Wait, that's heat. Oh, the cigarette lighter works. It does? Yes, it do. Solenoid is uh, bad. <laughs> There it goes. Ah, oh, it's just a little stuck. It's all good. I'll push it the rest of the way. <laughs> what I'm going to do is jack this thing up and start pulling wheels and see what we got for brakes or lack thereof. JD is going to clean up the tri-color interior. It's not too bad, but you can see a lot of mold and stuff on the upholstery. And that's original upholstery. So we definitely want to try to save that. The door panels and even the headliner. You can wipe that down too, because it's vinyl. Man, this interior is cool. It's got a few nifty things like, look at these seat belts. Not factory, of course, in 1959. But on one of these, I saw a sticker it said Montgomery Ward, 1966. So they put aftermarket seat belts in the car from Montgomery Ward. First stop on the brake train, and uh, I'm already learning things. Need a need a brake lining? Huh? That's pure asbestos. Go ahead and lick that. Now there's no drum on this. Is it in the car? Yes. Oh, okay. JD found uh, some brake parts anyway. I was trying to look on this. Driver's front. What happened is the car ended up going in a ditch, and that's why that back ride is messed up. And then this is actually tweaked a little too. Not a lot of damage or anything. The whole cross member was packed full of mud. It looks like it broke the sway bar mount here. I don't see any obvious damage from anything. That of course means absolutely nothing, but we can at least ignore it for now. Godspeed. I guess we should start on the front, and that's really for one particular reason. That's that I can't get front wheel cylinders for this. Now I can get them online, and that would mean waiting. So I bought a wheel cylinder hone and some rebuild kits for them, and we may just be able to rebuild them. And I'm gonna guess all those brake parts probably came out of the fronts. And yes, before I take apart brake lines on stuff, I try to hit them with a wire wheel and then soak them a little bit. That'll give us a chance of saving that brake line, and if we could save any of them, that saves me from having to flare them. And that's a win in my book. I'm gonna try to scrape out. Oh, <laughs> oh man, this is fun. Maybe they're not beyond redemption, though. We will see. By hitting this piston, try to knock that one out. In a perfect world, it's just the rubber seal that goes bad in there, and the pistons actually just pop out. In my world, that's not how this works at all. Want to live? I know. There you go. Hey, hey, a girl. Pistons are in a really poor condition. You can see pieces missing out of the edge of that. So clearly, it's totally fine. Uh, there is some pretty heavy pitting inside here. I guess it's worth a shot. Will the brake line come free? No. <laughs> vice grips to the rescue. Granted, that is now a vice grip sized nut, but that will work. Try our luck at honing a wheel cylinder. I haven't done this in probably 10 years, and the one time I did it, it did work. So this is just like a uh, hone in a engine cylinder. Pretty much just put these in and make passes in and out of it. Maybe use a little oil or something, you know, a little penetrating lube, probably do the trick. Oh, feels great. Uh, what happens in a wheel cylinder? You have your two pistons, right? Uh -huh. like this pistons, yeah. and then there's a spring in between them, like this. And this yeah. spring holds them apart, and this little rubber seal here cups the back of the piston, and then seals against the wheel cylinder body. And then when you inject fluid into here, into the space, well, you can't compress a liquid, right? It has to do something, right? So it forces these out, and then your brakes work. 
It's just hydraulics. I'm going to clean up these pistons with a piece of 400 grit and a little bit of penetrating oil. Do the best we can with what we have. Not like we have any choice. Do I trust these with my life? No. So let's install them in the brakes. Here's a wheel cylinder rebuild kit. The dust boots, the wheel cylinder seals, and a spring. You want to make sure the seals fit nice and tight in your wheel cylinder. And voila, one remanufactured in the USA wheel cylinder. Back on the interior front, JD's done a great job cleaning things, except for that handprint. What? Oh, what? <laughs> That's probably for wet. We have to figure out what to do with the dashboard and this thing. This is an optional padded dash for the car. However, it seems that they just padded it with sawdust. I'm about 90% sure. We have a couple options here, but both of them pretty much mean we got to pull it off. We could repad the dash with foam, but what's underneath it, you know? If it's mm -hmm. just coral painted metal, it'd be all right. Yeah. I think it'll just pull out. It oh, just... it will. Oh my God. <laughs> no, to give it your best shot, it, best worst case scenario, get it just the front detached to where we can flip it up and i have some foam we could try to put under yeah. it this wheel cylinder's almost as good back on the brake front you might even say it's worse this one's in better shape than the other side so far spin her down try to get some of that scale broke free let's see if i get lucky with the brake line Okay, are you vice group size perhaps? I don't think I'm gonna get lucky with this one. Yeah, you know, I'm pretty much down to my last resort here, so I'm gonna cut the brake line off and then try to use a 5-8 socket to unthread the rubber line from the heart line. That's not gonna work, so I'm kind of just wasting time here. But you know, it's good to have false hope, because that's still hope. I saved it. Nice. <laughs> I cut the hose off and then put a socket on the end of that huh. so that I could use the impact on it. I got her off. This one was in much better shape to start with. It probably have at least one front brake now and that is a significant improvement over zero. Is it clean under there? Clean. Like if you wipe that away, is it coral or is it rust? Yeah, it's coral. I think we just have to put some foam under it. I was, I think we could repaint it. We could. Clean this off. sand it. Look what JD found though. It's the factory, that's the build sheet out of the car, tucked under the dash. It's got all the car's information on it. It's in like perfect condition. Uh, I don't know what to tell you about this, buddy. Kind of a disaster. I mean, vacuum will clean that up. Oh, for sure. I, I don't think we had a lot of choice here. Yeah. Other than to take care of this, because that was... He'd be driving down the road with that just <laughs> looking at you. And it looked terrible. That's a disaster. Yes. Classic Industries has it for the low, low price of $525. It's a real bargain, you know? Yeah. I'm thinking we uh, glue some foam to the dash and then just put that back on. Yeah. Yeah. We're back out here today. JD's cleaning up the dash. Save this. I might be able to make this work with some one inch foam I just ordered. Because that looks, well, pretty bad. But it's not rust or anything, it's just glue and stuff. Otherwise, I gotta say, man, this interior looks great. A hell of a job. Parts store gave me the wrong brake shoes. Well, we wait on the correct ones to show up. Let's go ahead and get the master cylinder swapped out. Here's the old one. She's a, a Wagner Lockheed, like Lockheed Martin. It's aircraft stuff. We're gonna pop this out. So this is actually the brake light switch on a Ford. Uh, it's hydraulically operated. When you push on the brake, and then the fluid comes out the front here. Some of the fluid's diverted to this pressure switch to say, hey, turn on the brake lights. Oh, well, we went to O'Reilly. Having a hard time finding crush washers for this. So it looks like we'll just put the original ones back on it. That'll work fine. Anyway, let's bench bleed the new master cylinder. Thankfully, it came with all these plugs. It came with three of them, actually. And uh, not a single one fits. There we go. Yeah, I'll just jam that in there. Yeah, that, that'll seal for sure. Kind of work it like a quarter inch at a time, like a little bit here and then a little further in, in and out. We're going to do it until I can't hardly push that piston no more. What we're doing is bleeding the cylinder that this piston travels in. So we're trying to fill that cylinder with brake fluid 
to ensure that we got a good pedal feel. You don't want to be pushing your foot down on a sack of plums, you know. See that? Yep. There you go. It's bled. Now all the fluid is being forced back through the inlet on top. The new dust boot. So you got to install these properly. Good to go now. It doesn't line up at all. The mounting is nowhere near it. Man, that's some really good stuff, O'Reilly Auto Parts. Thanks for that. Wow. Pretty good, you know, made by a someone in a Chinese factory who saw a picture of one once. If I go off the bottom hole, the bottom hole seems to be correct. We drilled this pretty much right below it and uh, see if that works. So I'm really getting precise here. You see, I've, I've eyeballed and lined up the bottom hole. See, it's supposed to be right there. You know that? Mm-hmm. And that one is therefore supposed to be right there. Of course it is. You know, it, my eyeball micrometer dialed that in. That is installed just beautifully. I mean, nearly to a level of perfection that even Chip Foose admires. It actually fits. Yeah, it does. You did a good job. Kind of. Well, I'm losing my help for a minute. JD's got to go put some exhaust manifold gaskets on his car. On the 390 we built for it, make sure you check out that build as well. You know, one thing to note here that a lot of old guys don't, a lot of young guys don't, uh, including some of my friends, is the short shoe always goes forward. This is your primary shoe. Your secondary shoe does most of the stopping, because when the wheel's rolling this way, this shoe kicks out more and it, this actually does more of the stopping than this one. But does it actually make any difference? No. I'm missing the brake nails. I probably should have worked hard for kids. So I scrounged around and found a few brake nails. Everything else is here for the brake shoes. No self-adjusters in 59. Maybe optional? I'm not sure. Speaking of adjusters, here is the brake adjuster. And it's actually free and totally functional. So I'm going to wrap this up and we're going to move on to the rears. But I, one nightmare at a time. At least we can say the front brakes will be done. How's it going? Pretty good. Well, got the top ones, but I need to get the bottom one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's probably not easy, is it? No. I don't know if you got to loosen the exhaust pipe or not. Probably not, though. Good luck. All right. They're assembled. You know, we're going to go ahead and turn the drums. Very important <gasps> that you turn drums, you know, because, you know, like, well, I've never for my life, but you know, we just kind of knock the rust off them and then, uh, you know, that'll be good enough. Freshly rebuilt and turned. So now let's go ahead and pop the inner wheel bearing out, which means we've got to pull the inner wheel seal out, just like that, and it's in really bad shape, so we'll just pretend we've never looked at that. Bauer bearings, made in the USA, and they're still good as could be. They're probably from 1959. But you know, that's really not that surprising, you know, considering that this car and all of its parts were engineered, assembled, and, you know, created by the people that both designed, engineered, and created tanks and planes and bombs and everything else for World War II, Korea, Jet Age. You know, it was a time of huge industrial revolution in this country. Some of the greatest minds that ever lived were from that time, and when they made something back in the 50s, well, by God, it was made to last forever. Case in point, look at this thing. Should be good for another 64 years, give or take. Put her back in to its race. Get this goo off of my hands. And I'll put all that in, slide the drum on. We'll do the outer bearing. Set our bearing preload, adjust the brake, and it's done. I was a little excessive with the grease on that one. The bearing preload set, what I like to do is I tighten them all the way down. Make sure that they crush together and all the grease kind of squeezes out of them. We'll back her off. The original cotter key back in there because this cotter key actually has more steel in it than any modern car. Science fact. That's probably it right there. And we're going to have to come back and readjust these probably after they break in, especially because of how the drums aren't perfect. Got her? Yep. It's on there, I just need to put the bolts in and then pull it down. Cool. Maybe this thing will sound a little better than the pink one. Hopefully. Well, these are done and it's time to finish off the rebuild by putting some new drums on. There we go. Look at that. 
Oh, there's... Ah. Wow. I didn't know this thing had brand new brakes. What? What's this? Another one? Uh, what? Right before your very eyes. Look at that. For our next trick, we gotta try to get this brake line off to the rubber T on the axle in the back. Let's just take a moment to look at how beautiful the underside of this car is. Wow, it's so solid. Let's see. Hey. Ha <laughs> ha. Finally, we actually got lucky. I will take that all day because this is the one line I really didn't want to replace. Oh, look, it's got brake fluid in it. Oh, that's a really good sign. Let's see if we get lucky. A second, third, fourth, and fifth time. <laughs> There's one. Save that one. Should we trust it? I don't know. Probably not, but gonna. We got lucky on that one. Get my wrench back, but I got it broke loose. Wheel cylinder broke free, so that line is good to go. That's, I mean, it's fine. Clean up this junction block. This is the T. Fluid goes in here and comes out these two orifices here. You know, in some cars it's integral to a rubber hose and you got to change the whole thing, but on these older Fords, the hose is separate, replaceable. You just reuse this. I'm going to reassemble this. I hook the brake line up. Then I'm gonna jump into these brakes and knock them out real quick. Crush washer, crushing, crushing the crush washer. Ow. Crushing me, refurbished. one more break to do uh, and this is the only one that was actually intact it actually still has the keepers on it to retain the drum onto the axle of the car while it's being assembled that's all they do it's like the little screw in your rotor it doesn't do anything it's just there to keep the rotor from falling off of it while the car is being assembled genuine antique brake dust in here I'm gonna be bottling that and selling it Break them loose, and they actually just thread on to the stud. Rare. Numbers matching. See if the brake adjuster works, I guess. It's hung up on the shoes. Maybe I can get them to... Yeah, there we go. There we go. Yeah, that's supposed to work. Rear brakes are done. Let's go ahead and top her off. Throw JD in the car and let's get to bleeding. Wow, I spilled the shit out of that. Always start on the right rear of a car to bleed brakes. Furthest point away from the system, it'll get more air out that way. Pop them. Mm -hmm. Holding. Pop again and hold. Mm -hmm. That one looked pretty good. Pump them. Feel like anything? Uh, no. Oh, great. I got no air out of this one. None? Nope. It looked fine. Did it feel like anything? No. You didn't feel anything when it released? Uh, no. Alright, pump it. You're holding the brake right now? Yes. It's not doing anything. I think we figured out why maybe at least some of the problem <laughs> just blew the front to rear brake line. You know, the one I really didn't want to replace. So that's nice. I've got a big old piece of brake line here. And uh, I think better safe than sorry when you got a single pop master cylinder. You don't want to be splicing any lines. You lose anything in this system, you won't got no brakes. Then you die. I'm hoping that because there was a hole in the line, that's why the brakes were kind of eh, like I had fluid but no pressure. I'm, I'm guessing it's because it's a single pot system, no proportioning valve. Fluid goes to the path of least resistance, so 
There's a hole somewhere. It's all going out the hole and not into the wheel cylinders. Then she kind of had to come out in pieces. You can see how rusty this thing was. And really, the whole dang line is like that. I mean, it's it's pretty close to going. And if we were really smart, we would replace all of them. But we're not that smart, so we'll just replace this one. So we're like a little smart. Not much, but a little. The front half done. Got it bent, hooked up to the junction block. Now we're gonna run it. I'm gonna pull it all the way back, cut off what we need, and then we'll be good to go. I've been using my new flare tool. Sure, -er. hydraulic pistol grip flare tool. No sponsorship stuff there. I paid 300 bucks for that, and it's a lifesaver. I love it. Well, line's done. There's a huge mess on the floor. I guess let's bleed the brakes and see what happens. It's getting late. I'll, I'll lay in the in the brake pool. Yeah. I'll just swim it in there. Mm -hmm. There's some weird fish in there, man. <laughs> we have brakes. Kind of. Not very good pressure. And it looks like it's leaking fluid out of the front drums, which means probably those rebuilt wheel cylinders are, uh, well, maybe I didn't rebuild them all that well. I ordered some new ones, but they won't be here in time to get this video out, so let's just verify that they're leaking. Well, that's not leaking. Are you sure? Mm hmm. <laughs> Not behind it, or? I mean, it would be, if it was a wheel cylinder this bad, it'd be pouring in here. Now, does that mean it's working? I have no clue. The other thing I was wondering, see these springs? I put them in these holes. Obviously, all this was disassembled, so I don't really know how it went together. I put them in these holes. Maybe they're supposed to be in these next holes up. Maybe they're too tight and it can't, you know, spread the, if you can't spread it out. Although, I, you should still have some pressure, I think. Go ahead and hit the brake. Yeah, I mean, it's spreading the shoe apart. It's spreading half of the shoe apart, but I don't believe it would spread this one. Maybe it's the driver's one. And what? Doesn't seem to be leaking at all. So if it isn't that, at least it's not that yet, it's a master cylinder. It has to be. That's all that's left. I mean, the rest of this stuff is all in here. It's all functional. I bet if you hit the brakes, this will work. Yeah. Should probably take a look at it. Yep. <laughs> Works just like it should. Got one last shot here. I'm going to take the line off the master cylinder. We're going to try to bench bleed it on the car, put it back together, and see if that improves the pedal feel. And if it does, then we'll move on to bleeding the brakes again. If it doesn't, then we'll just say, I don't know, I guess that's how the pedal feels in this one. Because all the brakes work. It just doesn't feel like they work. Which means they probably don't work. But we can ignore that. I'm just going to pop this line off. Plug it with my finger. Go ahead and slowly push the brake. Feel like anything? No. It still didn't feel like anything? Slow. I got an air bubble out of it. Hang on. Uh, I got an idea. So I quickly made a line up to recirculate the fluid into the reservoir. Go ahead and slowly push them a few times. A little bit of air. Not much, though. Feel like anything? Nope. Still doesn't feel like anything? Nothing I think this master cylinder's junk. Alright, well that is as well bench bled as any master cylinder I've ever done. And uh, the brakes on all the rest of my cars work. I think I'm going to blame China on this one. Does that sound like a plan if this doesn't work? Yep. Okay. China. Alright, so I hit him a few times and noticed uh, we have brakes. Kind of. Mm -hmm. To the floor, but pump them a few times. Mm -hmm. Build some pressure. Oh yeah, that's way better. We must have had one air bubble in there. Let's bleed the brakes again. Yeah. And see what that does. Mm -hmm. Down. Up. Well, after all of that... The brakes work perfectly, with no problems at all. Definitely haven't been doing this for 14 hours today, and uh, gained, well, we did gain brakes. Yeah, because you know, so, I mean, they work good. I think we got a crap master cylinder, if I had to just take a stab at it. I think the brakes work perfectly fine. Uh, yeah, I think you're right. I think you're 100% correct in that. Uh, how about we change the oil in it, and we'll drive it tomorrow. All right. Uh, you got my... Cross hall branch out. Oh, that was loose. Oh. That's always a good sign. It didn't uh, leak? No. 
course it didn't leak. It's the Ford. Doesn't care. Doesn't need brakes. Doesn't even need oil. It's like whatever. Didn't even need gas. No. Is we just good? ran it for like five minutes on what was in the bowl. Oh, that's a weird oil filter. Bauer? Bowens? I don't know what is this. Is that oh. Mm. Boas. Bows. Performance 500. That means 500 horsepower. Yep. <laughs> it's pretty fancy. Fill tubes handy on these. So, of course, we're going to start off with some zinc additive. And, uh, you know, I watched Project Farm's video on the STP oil treatment stuff and how it uh, has no zinc in it. Or basically no zinc in it. And does nothing. You know, I haven't seen them test this Rizlone stuff. And, uh, it just says ZDDP supplement, and I'm pretty sure this is actually zinc additive to protect your flat tap and cam. Also, it's not pure goo; it's just kind of liquid oil. This is this is what people love. Oh, oh! Look at the pour. Look at the liquid gold. Look at the jag. There's no jag there. Shut up. I think the ignition switch is bad because. Maybe not the solenoid. If the ignition switch is working, we'd be sending 12 volts here, which would go to the start terminal on the solenoid. And if I just arc this, it works. The solenoid is actually still functional, but it's not getting its signal, so probably key switch or a wire or something. Thankfully, it's easy to start. I think it needed that. It's, uh, you know, it's now perfectly fine, ready to go. I mean, everything's perfect on this car now. We'll just throw the wheels back on it and go try to drive it. These Magnums are completely the wrong era of wheel for this car. I got these 1957 Ford hubcaps, which look a lot better than the 59 hubcap. I got these from a buddy of mine and had them laying around for a bit. I think they look good on here. Yeah. Looks more correct for a 50s car, other than the white letter tire, that's got to go too. Uh, I ordered some white walls to put on the original wheels, but they won't be here for a few days, so this will have to do for now. A couple things I forgot to do, I was going to cut the end of this tailpipe off. If you might notice that the, uh, the fuel line is just dragging on the ground, probably should have done that while it was in the air, but it's too late now. What a perfectly straight cut. There we go. You know, we could very easily just plug that into the tail light instead of using the drill battery. Not that it's not incredibly convenient. Now, we're going to pop the dent out of this quarter. And by that, I mean we're going to make a failed attempt of it. We have a football here. I want to make sure I can access the, the filling hole. But the good thing, you know, these are... Uh, you can form these to be any shape you need, actually. You know, see that? This is uh, pretty pro. Pretty pro stuff. Uh, I wouldn't expect just anybody to understand. But, you know, somebody's got to do it. So we'll just uh, stab that in there. Yeah. And then uh, we'll zip tie it on. Yeah! Woo! Well, it did actually do something. It pushed it out. We just need 50 more footballs. Cozy. That worked. There. Stop. That's a lot better than it was. Yeah, it looks like it. I think I can get this corner a little bit. Maybe with a port of power. Let's try to port of power this up here. It's double paneled, and it's like got that much room in between it and the truck, so this won't fit. This thing's more armor plated than a brakes truck, nor the rust. That'll get covered right up with all the trim. Convenient access hole here. This is some paintless dent removal here, people. Bet you didn't know you were getting a PDR lesson. 
That is significantly better. Just, yeah, get you back up in there. Yeah, yeah. Uh. That's less embarrassing though. If we get the trim back on it, I wouldn't mind driving this thing around just like that. Just in case you were wondering, I'm definitely not procrastinating on testing the brakes. In fact, I'm just so confident in them that I don't even think it's necessary, which is why, you know, let's just fix the quarter panel since she's pretty much good to go. I'll just shoot a few self-tappers into this piece of tin. Try to straighten up as much of the trim as we can, and I'm pretty sure I have a lot of the trim for this car. I just gotta find it. So I got a 2x4 and I've got a non-marring hammer here. Something about like that. Alright, now I'm just gonna find some piece of solid metal to screw to in here. Self-tapper saves the day yet again. Well, that's a little bit better. It's not a 10-footer. Maybe a 50, but it's a hell of a lot better than it was. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take that for now. That's cruise night worthy. I guess it's time to quit putting it off and drive the damn thing. You know we haven't even pulled the air cleaner off of this? <laughs> well, it is all us, too. Most YouTube channels be like, okay, well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take 15 minutes to carefully inspect every single thing, you know, even though I already know it's good, but I need content, so... <laughs> I gotta say, I've never had that happen before. I'm looking at the tires right now, and so if those wheel cylinders were leaking, even though we're pretty sure they're not, it would be pouring out of there. Could be that they need adjusted out more, but man, I, I mean, I had them dragging. They should be doing more than they're doing, even if they were totally out of adjustment. It should extend. When we had that brake drum off, and you hit the brakes, it should have, you know, I mean, they were working, but... So this is the original master cylinder. While it is frozen, it doesn't actually look that bad. So I'm kind of wondering if we take it apart and then clean it out, throw it back together, and throw it on the car and just see what happens. Sound like a plan? Yep. Let's do it. we got to start with, you know, take this little horseshoe ring out of the back here, and then everything will just kind of blow out after it. Wash her out. It's gross. It's in good shape. See what it feels like. Maybe hit it with that phone. If this fixes it, we're going to drive that car to O'Reilly's and then throw their Chinese master cylinder through their window. Pretty good. Yeah, it cleaned up. Maybe we got a shot here. I have my official RoadkillCustoms.com shop rags and, you know, put them to good use. <laughs> I'm sure he's proud of that. There we go. Well, I got the spring and the seals back in there. It's kind of lubricating everything with some brake fluid. Sounds like it seals up. I think it's just plugged full of stuff. go. One master cylinder. Nice. You didn't bleed it good enough. <laughs> it seems like it's kind of working. So we've done this three times. <laughs> I know. All right, let me do that a little more and then we'll put it on the car. Well, she's got her original Made USA Wagner master cylinder back on. Let's see what 
It feels like it's got anything. Soft, but better. You come take a feel. You hit it more than me. Oh, that's a lot better. Uh huh. Yeah. You gotta be shitting me. See if it'll hold itself on the hill. It definitely wouldn't before. Wow. God bless America, you sons of bitches. That master cylinder is 64 years old. We didn't even put any new parts in it, and it works! Not great. <laughs> I think they need blood, but let's try to drive it. Couple pumps. It's not good. I mean, really, that master cylinder is probably bad, but. Yeah. <laughs> we do definitely need to bleed the brakes. Yeah. We need, we need it. Uh, I can't. We can't drive this. Alright. That's, that's so much better than it was. Oh, yeah. All right, we're just going to bleed them out here because I don't want to clean the floor of the shop yet and then re-clean it again. And I'm actually running the brake adjusters out just to share if I can get an extra click on them. Well, let's see if uh, bleeding the brakes did anything. Uh, I did get a little air out of them, but, you know, I, I got whatever air was in there when we swapped the master cylinder. So the reason that uh, it wasn't the key switch that was bad, this actually has a neutral safety switch. I didn't know that better. still, but th this should let us drive down the road. <laughs> Transmission's not very happy. Got all three, though. Brakes are dragging really bad. We can't drive too much. Oh, there goes the hubcap. Oh, no. No, oh, no, it darted Boy, across the... Uh, all right, I know where it went. All right, we, we can get it. 50, 55. Well, you know, the shop was too cozy, so you know, we went to a more rustic environment to work on the brakes. I'm going to back the adjusters on these off a little bit. They, oh, they were smoking. Did you say the trunk flew open? Yes. Well, that's good. It drives better, though. It's not dragging anymore. There's something up in the front end. 
they're working. It's just now it's kind of like to the point of where okay, the brakes need service. It needs new wheel cylinders and a master cylinder. Again, we'll drive around a little more. Yeah, sure. No, no, the tip gauge is kind of high. Maybe oh. we ought to stop and give her a once over. Right. Oh, the hubcap. Oh yeah. Shit. Let's see what ditch was it. This one or the yeah, next one? No, it's the next one. Was next, it? Yeah, it was All by right. that pond. Yeah, I see it. I should get out. somebody's way. Right. Let's go to O'Reilly. Take that master cylinder back. I trust these brakes. Yeah. At least we have 1950s technology to protect us. Oh no, the, ted, the padded dash is gone. We're dead for sure now. I drive the car through the window the way these brakes work. They're better, though, actually. Yeah, they are better. Yeah. Here is a special and urgent message for you. This is Howard Viking, your official civil defense announcer. Civil defense authorities have determined that it is advisable for all persons to leave the city. Your safety and perhaps your life depends on remaining calm and following these instructions. Do not attempt to cross town or drive across roads being used by others as they leave Let's cross town. town. Follow civil <laughs> defense road signs and directions. Your car radio should be tuned to 640 or 1240 for official instructions. 640? Remain 1240. calm and give everybody... Well, the lock cylinder just broke. There's a drill battery in there. <laughs> we're running the fuel pump. Well, I guess we're not going to get groceries in this. Better take her on home. What is that? Is it the brakes? Maybe. The brakes are actually working a lot better now. 52 still got a little power, doesn't it? Oh, that wasn't even floored. It's like sailing a ship. It's like your car. It's just a little more posh, a little more comfortable. You feel more important driving this. And you should. <laughs> Holy death wobble. Oh, 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 wow, okay. She needs a set of shocks. We were clipping along pretty good there. <laughs> what happened to the brakes? Why do they work fine now? That master cylinder is just like, oh, okay, you got that Chinese one out of here. Now we're going to click. Whatever. Good enough for me. I'm not going to argue with it. Yeah, I'm not complaining. Lady Midget. We should glue that to your roof. Fixed. It was just kind of in between latching positions. No harm done. Except for the fuel pump's dead. She did pretty good on her main void. We probably put, what, 10, 15 miles on it? Not bad for a car that's been sitting for 44 years. It's been off the road for 44 years. I love it. I actually really like this car. If you like old Pinky here, does that offend you? If you like the Ford, let me know down in the comments. Yeah, we'll see you next time on Pole Barn Garage. We'll probably be wet sanding the uh, Silver Dollar Chevy or something like that. I don't know. Maybe we'll we'll go cruise these two together. They, you know, kind of a match pair now. We got father son '59 Fords now. You know, mine's better in every way. No. No, it pretty much is. You know, I mean. I mean, the brakes work better. Brakes are on mine. great. No, no, these work great. No problem. Yours lock up every. No, time. no, they don't do that. No, no, she's pretty much good to go. You know, I got 352. I have a 390. I have a four barrel. Uh, that makes up for it, though. A little bit. It's more cubic inches. You got a C6, and this has a mystery cruisomatic. That, that transmission is weird feeling. I think it's awesome. You guys, let me know what I should do with this thing. I think after we fix that quarter, I don't, I don't think I'm going to do anything else to it. It just kind of works out. 
like a survivor car like it is. I don't know. I don't even know if there's any video content here. It's too good, actually. The car is fantastic. Maybe we fix the death wobble. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we could do that. Anyway, we'll see you guys next time.